Hello, school music, whoever you are. Pretty. <laughs> Let me see. I can request for you to unmute. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> hey, Brittany, how are you doing? Good. I run a lot of meetings for work, so. No problem. So what kind of music <laughs> do you teach? Um, I don't teach. I'm um, the assistant to the director of the school of music at Western Michigan University. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> so you have a busy life right now because just to complicate things more, everything's online yeah. and it's music. Yes. <laughs> Which is kind of like terrible, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, John, let's see if we've got you now. Have you now? I hope so. Yay! Okay. Now we have John's voice. So, so when you on. said music, I thought maybe my music had turned on. <laughs> well, you could listen like, to something. I hate actually in my um, lives or on Twitch, I hate that I can't do music yet because it gets boring sometimes, like, because I'm the only one talking. At least here we'll have other people talking. So, all right. I'm getting ready. I think we have at least two other people that I know that had message. And I completely took the waiting room off on this one. Um, so we'll see, hopefully everybody everybody comes on in and gets into this. Neat. And thank you so, so the, much for offering this because- Oh, you are welcome. I'm also a grad student, so. <laughs> Life gets busy. Life gets yeah. real busy, right? <laughs> yeah, we, I get it. I was um, kind of always planning just in case that this Sunday would be a makeup. Um, so I knew that I would probably have to be here this Sunday anyway. So that was totally cool for me. You're incredibly sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think we should, like I said, I, there may be two more. I know one was, um, a nurse that had to work later, the one, one shift and she was going to try. If it's just us, it's just us. We'll get through things pretty quickly. So right now what I'm doing is I'm threading a needle. And it's even better if you have two needles threaded, you're gonna want about three feet of thread. We're gonna to try to work through two projects. Um, you will not make matches to those projects, you're just gonna make the one. And during that one specific one that you're making, um, we are, I'm gonna also kind of go off from what you're making and you'll see something totally different, but then you'll get this video after the fact Hi, Kathy. Welcome. Um, you'll get something after the fact to watch this. So you'll be able to watch this and to see what we were making and all of that. You'll get sent this class. So if we have anybody that joins us for a second go round, or I know I had two people that kind of cut out during their classes that never made it back in, um, they'll get whatever class you were in. So nobody else is going to see your class or anything. It'll just be um, you guys in the video. So. Hello to Kathy as well. Hi, joining in. Okay. And Kathy, what I said to the others here, I'll have you, let me ask you to unmute there. Let's see if we do that. Um, if you have two needles, size 10, size 11, size 12, doesn't matter. If you want to thread two needles, and I'm using 0 0.006 wildfire thread. I have a bright red thread just so that way you guys can see it. You'll see me here. You'll also see, I'll switch views as well. So you guys will get to see the normal kind of YouTube view. And you'll be able to see me and then you'll also see my hands as I'm, I'm working along and you see it going on. Um, I'm gonna take my watch off so it's not distracting. And I'm using red thread simply, like I said, because it's really easy to see on the white mat. Uh, but sometimes the red thread actually looks really cute in the design. We're going to start with our triangle and then we're going to go into our square. And for our triangle, we're just going to, you guys can see kind of what I did in both classes. We're going to just do the simple triangle sewing down while I teach how to do the brick stitch. And then from there, I go kind of off and crazy while you guys are working. And that way you guys can work and do your thing and uh, learn a little bit, learn a little bit more that you can come back and you can watch. So, hi Stephanie, how are you doing? And we'll, we're gonna, have, we'll get started kind of right at 6.30, but there might be a couple people kind of coming in, coming out. Um, 
Go ahead and get two needles threaded, about three feet each. That'll be more thread than you need. But that way, when you go to make your match of your earring, you already have it. Kind of nice. I'm gonna switch you guys back to this view here. Let me wait and see. Let's see if I have any green open. And we're gonna be starting with our triangle. We're gonna start with our triangle form and we're gonna to touch on a whole bunch of different ways of using brick stitch. And I have kind of thread coming out of tons of my examples. Okay. So my, uh, the, the, only, the only downfall today is I'm on pickup from you fruit. So I need to be uh, in the car by 7.55. So we will be done most likely at 7.55. So I can be there for the uh, 8.05 pickup because if I come at eight, it's not cool. Um, I have to be like a couple minutes late, so. Um, but the, uh, the other thing that I had fun today is I conquered as I told my husband, I was like, I'm cord conquering. So I went around the house and I gathered every cord and put them in bags, figured them out, held them up to people and asked them what this cord goes with, what that cord goes with. It felt so good when it was done. I think I probably put my hands on and touched physically about a hundred cords. They keep moving with us. I know you guys can probably relate to that. And I keep thinking, what is this for? I'm gonna need this someday. So I can't get rid of it. It's like lost socks. And then I think, oh, I throw the lost sock away or I use it in a craft or something. And then I find the match and I'm like, I'm not throwing this cord away. But I said to my husband, why do we have 16 HDMI cables? He's like, every time I need one, I buy another one. I was like, don't buy another HDMI cable. Found lots of printer cables for printers that were deceased years ago. Found ink from printers that were deceased years ago. I'm like taking pictures and sending it to friends. Who still has this printer? Come on and you can have the ink that's left. It's so strange because I had a, I worked through a bin today. Uh, one of those little, little blue, you know, top, uh, Rubbermaid bins. Yeah. That was all old cables. Yeah. That's exactly, same, that's, I spent the whole thing. afternoon I doing that. Wasteful because I don't want to after, ever have to go back out and buy that cord. So <laughs> I organized them all and put all the HDMI cords together. I put all of the three prong, whatever they're called, which each end is a different color. I put them all in one bag. I did micro USB, USB, Apple cords. I did all the chargers. And then I said to my husband, all right, now these are the ones that I have no idea what they are. He's like, oh, that's from a phone of mine back when I was in college. I was like, yeah, okay, this one's getting thrown out. They don't even make this cord connection anymore. Hi, Alyssa, welcome. Hello. And Alyssa, while you are joining in and getting ready, um, go ahead and thread two needles, about three feet of thread. And as I was saying to the other ladies in, doesn't matter what size needle, you can do a 10, 11, 12, doesn't matter for our purpose, because generally speaking, if you wanna know how I choose needles, when it is time to choose a needle, if I know that I'm gonna be using a 15-0 in a project and it's not just going to be like the interior of a bezel, and I'm just doing one round or two rounds of thread. If I'm not exactly sure what I'm making or I don't know how many times my thread goes through that 15, I stick on a size 12 needle. That way I'm not depressed later on when I have to shift and add to my already threaded needle and take off a needle and add a 12 on. But for this one with the Delicas, they have nice big holes, so you'll be able to use whichever you want. Allie, is there an easy way to thread a there needle? There is. So while you're threading your needle, let me change my view here so you guys can see. Um, when you are threading your needle, the easiest way is to have a needle nose or a wide jaw pliers. So when I went in to thread my needle, I, rather than use scissors, because it tends to fray the end, I use my thread zap or my thread burner. And I make sure when I'm taking it off the spool, I kind of pull a little bit of tension 
so that way my burn goes kind of right through. It burns it, and then what happens a lot of time when it's hard to thread your needle is because there's little pieces that just won't go. That kind of fuses the end if you're using a wildfire or a fire line. And then I go in and press out on the end of it. And you can see it really, really kind of pushes that out. And what that allows you to do, let me get even closer in there. What that allows you to do usually is put it into that needle a lot faster. There's also there's also uh, big eye needles, which I don't even have any up here, but they basically are the whole, they're fused at the, the ends. So in between here, you can't really see it unless you pull it open, but this whole section here is open and is a needle. If you really end up having tons, uh, I forgot I pulled, pulled in close. If you end up having tons of problems getting the needle thread in, a wide eye needle is super helpful for that because the whole thing opens up and then it collapses upon itself. And the nice thing is you actually can use more of the thread because it's double ended basically. But that also, if you're not used to that, you end up poking yourself. So just be, be aware of that too. Hi Debbie, how are you doing? Welcome. Okay. All right. All right, so we're gonna go around and we'll just do this kind of in order of the way that people came into the Zoom. That way, since you've been here a little bit longer, I usually open the Zoom about 10 minutes, long, 10 minutes early. We'll introduce ourselves and then say um, what your knowledge of Brick Stitch is and where you're from. If you, you can just keep it kind of short. I know Brick Stitch, I don't know Brick Stitch. I've done a little bit, um, I'm having trouble, this and that. And so I'll start because I started the meeting, so I was on here first. And then Dawn, get ready, you're up first. So uh, my name is Allie, and in we just celebrated actually two days ago, 15 years of Potomac Beads. It came up on my little anniversary thing on Facebook. So 15 years ago, we uh, opened Potomac Beads, and I'm pretty good at brick stitch. I've done it quite a few times, and I'm from Lancaster, PA. I am not Amish. I do know Amish people, but I grew up in Lancaster City. So, and I'm excited to teach you guys today. I'm glad that a lot of you are getting in and you got missed it or didn't have the opportunity that we were able to do another go round. So I'm gonna say your name, even though it's your, you're gonna say your name again too, but that way we know how to go. So Dawn, you're up. Well, thank you. So I'm Dawn and um, I am in Los Angeles, California. I'm almost a native Californian, but because I'm an Air Force brat, I have lived in Levittown, Pennsylvania. So I've actually visited Lancaster gotcha. um, at, and I've lived in a couple other places, including some overseas. But um, my experience with Brick Stitch is I've done it a few times, mostly watching uh, your videos or, you know, just reading patterns. Uh, and I thought this would be fun. Okay. Uh, Brittany, you are next. Hi, I am Brittany Young, and I'm out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I found Pot Potomac through visiting my mom, who lives in York, and got addicted, um, but I've been beating forever, um, but I've only done real simple brick stitch, and I haven't put it on frames, so that's oh. what intrigued me on this. Nice. Mm. Let me see if my memory serves me right. I think Kathy, I think you are next. Kathy, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, Kathy Peterfish. And um, I have never done brick stitch. And so, but I, I enjoy beading and I thought this was another thing to learn. <laughs> new, new experience. Oh, I mean, Honestly, if you would have told me 15 years ago that I was going to be teaching on the internet because there was a pandemic, I would have never guessed <laughs> rather than going to shows and all of that stuff. And it's still fun to see people's faces. So, uh, Steph, you are next. Yes. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Um, I'm kind of new to Brick Stitch. I did the Brick Stitch on the first tutorial that you did. And I'm back here just to um, keep doing it and get better at it. I'm also from um, Albertson, uh, Long Island, New York. And Alyssa. Let's see if I can get Alyssa to unmute there. Some people I know you're in between things. So if you can't, not a big deal. 
Um, my name is actually Jennifer. I'm using my daughter Zoom, so that's why Jennifer. it's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, if you do want to change your name, Jennifer, in the top right-hand corner, you don't have to. Now I have written down and crossed out a list and wrote Jennifer. So <laughs> but in that, I uh, apologize. Three little dots in the top right-hand corner. You can change your name if you do want to. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I will do that here in a minute. So, um, I have I have some um familiarity with brick stitch. I've not done a lot of it, but I, I get the general idea of it. Um, I am originally from Texas, but I married my husband, met him in the military, and um, we moved to Pensacola 20 years ago now. So I am in Pensacola, Florida. Welcome. Okay, Debbie. Let me see if I can get you to unmute there. I'll request that you unmute, and then if you can't, not a big deal. Okay, how's that? Hey, you're good. You? Okay. Hi, um, I live in Oregon, and I have only tried brick stitch once a long, long time ago. And I'm used to been well. I've been beating for a long time, but I've had um, five years or so without it due to health problems. So I'm just coming back. Welcome back to beating. All right, and then whoever just joined us on the iPhone, if you wanna introduce yourself, if you're there. All right, if you figure it out, somebody's still figuring it out. On your iPhone, if you're there and you wanna talk, talk at any time. So the idea of this class is to learn the stitch and to really learn the stitch to be able to problem solve on the stitch in case you have any um, hurdles that you get to, you get to the ends, you need to make things longer, shorter, you wanna add beads on top. The idea again is not that we're gonna finish two pairs of earrings. We are going to master and learn the basics of brick stitch. Hopefully, even if you know this, you're going to get ideas, get suggestions, um, learn something new. And even, you never know, you might help somebody out that is here on this Zoom. While we are kind of getting ready, and I'm talking a little bit about why I chose what I chose, go ahead and do a needle. Uh, two if you get a chance, one if you uh, haven't yet. And you'll see this view of me. The other thing that you can do, if you have a question, I say something, and you don't feel comfortable talking or you can't get your mic on or off, I'm gonna put here in the chat, I'm gonna say, hello everyone. So if anybody needs um, anything, you can type it in that chat there and the chat will be open. You can talk, not talk. Honestly, it's usually just easier to talk because it takes so long to type and to do that. Um, but if you don't, if you wanna save a question for later, something about that that you don't wanna forget about, feel free to use the chat however you guys want to. So you'll see this view of me mainly. And what I'm going to do, actually, I'm gonna make myself just a tad bit bigger. I'm gonna expand, I'm gonna grow. There we go. Right. Ellie, yep. I have a question. Uh, my kit didn't arrive in time, and so I don't have the frames. Is it No problem. So okay. If you have, do you, if you happen to have anything there, like a toggle, um, a uh, bigger jump ring or split ring, anything with that opening, a square, no problem, do that. If you have Delica's, great. If not, 11 OC beads, 8 OC beads, a nice thing with a brick stitch, it doesn't really matter. So if you happen to have like even a key ring sitting by, great, we'll use that. Something to attach to. And then I will go over, I've got like my massive amounts of supplies here after teaching from a couple of classes. Um, I will also go over how to start and do it without being on a form as well too. So we're gonna go over that, but we're gonna learn on the form and then we'll progress after that. And I think my big piece might be on my other book now, so I'll look for it. Um, like I said, if you have any questions at all, just interrupt, not a problem. And my view will go from here all the way to, let me slide me over. You guys don't need to see that. All right, so my view will go all the way from here where you can see a little bit more of my hands as we get more detail. 
I'll go further out sometimes or I will come even closer for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes I will also go on this big screen here because sometimes I'll show you guys how I move my hands because most of the beading, even though I'm doing most of my beading in a two by two inch square for you guys, most of the time I do it, I'm holding my form up by my head. I tend to bead right about 10 inches from my face. That's my um, kind of go-to and how I feel the most comfortable beading. And it's how I'm the fastest. I've gotten pretty fast down here about 25 inches away and in a little kind of tiny, tiny little square. But we're gonna begin with our triangle. And the reason we're gonna begin with a triangle, and I have a size 10 needle here. It's a little bit firmer than a 12. I'm using 0 0.006 wildfire beading thread. And the reason that I'm using this thread is because it's a little bit stiffer. So I'm not using, uh, I'll grab it. I'll show you guys the difference in like a KO thread, Miyuki thread, one that's not thermally bonded. It's gonna have a little bit more of a flow to it. When we talk about fringe, we'll talk about that. But to start, I actually want my form to be pretty stiff. So that's where I'm not 0 0.006 wildfire. I'm using red because it makes it easy for you guys to see. So that's why I'm using the red. The reason I'm using the triangle as well, it's not huge, it's pretty small, it's 15 millimeters. So we're gonna be able to get through and do our first little pyramid here or our downgrade pretty quickly. And that's gonna make it easy because then we're not spending a ton of time getting the stitch, but it's just big enough by the time you get to the end, you'll know the stitch if you do not know the stitch. I would suggest for you that you get two different colors of your Delicas out. It doesn't matter which two. I'm gonna be using red and green again because they're the easiest to see. So I'm gonna make little piles here of my red beads. Gotta open my green luster beads here. And get those out. And then the second thing we do, we'll do it on that silver square form. Also just forewarning those of you that weren't kind of in here early, we will not be done by 7.30. It's just not gonna happen. We have to be done by 7.55 because I am pickup today for youth group for my daughter. So we have to be done by 7.55 because that's why I can make it over to youth group in about eight minutes and that works. Uh, but we won't be done at 7.30. So just, just know that. All right, so I have my two colors out here. I'm not worrying about my ear wires at all. Don't even think about them. I'll show you how to add them after the fact. When looking at brick stitch, the reason I want to teach you first on a frame rather than starting with just the free form, no frame, is because when you start with a free form, no frame, you have to learn ladder stitch first. And I don't want you to have to learn ladder stitch yet. You will learn ladder stitch, but you don't have to learn that yet. We're going to go in and we're going to be learning the basics of this brick stitch attaching to a form because it starts right away with brick stitch. So I have my thread here up in my hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie my thread onto my form. And I'm not really worrying about where it is right now. It'll dangle and move all around it. I'm gonna leave about two inches of thread, one and a half to two inches of thread at the very end. The only reason I'm leaving that thread is because I want to possibly tie on my end of my thread to make a knot there. So I'm just gonna tie this nice and tight there. And it will move up and down my frame as I'm looking at it. So don't worry about that. Don't think, oh, I didn't tie it tight enough. It's thread. It's going to move up and down because it has nothing really that it's anchoring on. We're going to begin with our brick stitch here. And I'll start um, with this same, I'll start with green first. That way you can see the green a little bit better on the red beads. When you start brick stitch, it's going to be different from peyote stitch if you've done that. It's gonna be different from many other stitches that the beads, the holes are going to sit vertical rather than horizontal. So when you're used to beading, you're used to kind of starting on one end and you have it expand to the other end and you can kind of bead weave back and forth here. But when we're doing the brick stitch, the beads are gonna sit end to end. So they're gonna sit right on top of one another. Here's one of my pictures from the last class here. What we're doing, let me grab that pen that of course ended up on the floor. What we're doing is we are going to be sitting these beads and capturing them so that they sit on that vertical. We're going to add two beads and then we're going to loop around the frame 
and go back through the same bead. We're gonna add another bead, loop through the frame and go back through the bead. We're gonna go and add another bead, loop through the frame and go back through the bead. That's the basis of brick stitch. When we're connecting here, these threads that are gonna be connecting from one bead to the other, those are gonna be called bridge threads. We're gonna worry about those on row number two. So don't really worry about those yet. Just be aware you will see thread kind of arching from one bead to another. When you start brick stitch, you have to start with two beads. So I'm going to start with two beads on my needle. Every other time I'm gonna add one bead. So I have two beads that are currently sitting on my needle and I'm gonna let those drop down right next to my frame. So they're just gonna go right down next to that frame. Those beads, I'm going to take this thread and needle and I'm gonna make sure that they sit the correct way. So right now they kind of wanna lay right lateral with the frame. We don't want them to lay lateral with the frame. We want them to run the opposite okay. way. I'm gonna take my, go ahead, Jennifer. Good. Oh, sorry. You good? Oh, she's good, okay. So we're gonna take our thread and needle and I'm gonna go from the back of the frame. I'm gonna take my needle through the frame. Now with my left hand here, any lefties? Any lefties? Let me just hold up your hand. No lefties. All right, cool. So on my left hand, I'm kind of keeping my beads to the top of the frame, making sure that they're not going to kind of push themselves inside. Needle goes through the frame towards the top. And I'm gonna sew back through bead number two toward bead number one. So I'm sewing back through bead number two. It looks counterproductive, but I'm sewing back through bead number two toward bead number one. What that's gonna do is see that little loop there? I'm going super slow motion. So yours is probably already on there. That loop catches onto the frame and bead number two sits nice and opposite basically the frame. So you're going up and down there. See how bead number one doesn't really wanna cooperate? Don't worry about that. We're gonna solve that on row number two. From now on, we are gonna add one bead. The reason we added two beads at the start was because we don't want any thread showing. If I added one bead, thread would have to show. I'm gonna add bead number three. And again, I'm gonna go from the back of the frame toward the front. And notice how I just kind of pinch it in my hand there. When I pinch it in my hand, that prevents that bead from going anywhere other than where it needs to go. It's kind of laying right there next to bead number two. And again, my thread is coming now over top of the form and I'm gonna sew back through bead number three toward bead number two. Can you show that again, Ellie? Yep, I'm gonna show that again and again. All right, so I put my next bead on. If anybody's got that on there, you put your bead on. If you want to, as a newbie, if you've never done it before, let your bead go right down to the previous bead rather than holding it in your thread. That makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Then you're gonna take your thread and needle, go through your frame, and then sew back through that last bead that you added towards the previous bead. So I'm always sewing back kind of towards my body for me is the way that I think about it. When you pull tight then, you'll notice that these little threads that are attaching to the beads sit right on top of the bead, one thread each. Down here, the bridge threads, you're also gonna see one thread going from each bead to the next bead. That bridge thread we're gonna, is gonna be very important for number two. So you add a bead. I'm on bead five. If you're only on bead three, no problem. I'm on bead five. I'm gonna let that drop down next to the last beads. And just kind of have it hang there. Then I'm gonna go through my form from the back toward the front of the form. And once I do that, I'm gonna take my thread and needle and go back through that bead I just added toward the last bead. And that then makes that bead not get caught on the other earring, sit right up nice and tight. Now, when I pull the thread to tighten up these beads right next to one another, I'm pulling the thread, not my needle. So I'm not pulling the needle because 
what's going to happen if you keep pulling the needle is whatever thread is through your needle right now, that is going to start to wear on it. So by pulling the thread rather than pulling the needle, you're not wearing and tearing on the thread that's currently in the eye of the needle. If you're moving quite along, you are going to end up with eight beads total on your row. So I have one, two, three, four, five on mine. Here's bead number six, laying against bead number five. I sew from the back of the frame to the front of the frame. And then I'm taking my needle and thread and sewing back through that bead toward the previous one. I'm gonna do something real quick and change my camera. All right, there we go. For some reason, the video flips everything when it's on a Zoom, but it doesn't for everything else. So now we're good. You can see a little bit more. That's my left hand. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six beads on. I'm going to put my seventh. And you'll get in a groove where right now that bead's going to flop around. Sometimes it'll end up back in the frame. That's why I always kind of push it up towards the top. So through my frame. And if it bounces all around, just push it back to where you need it to be. And then so back through that bead toward the start. You're gonna have a total of eight beads that are gonna fit on this. So I'm gonna put my eighth bead on and then I'm gonna stop. If you are completely new to doing this, I know there are a couple of you that are, if you don't have eight beads, never fear. I want you to get just at least five on. So just get at least five beads onto your row. And that looks cool too. You don't have to fill the entire frame. So when you're filling the frame here, that's just for our sake because it looks nice. But when you are actually doing brick stitch, it doesn't really matter how many beads and how many rows you put on. If you only want four or three little beads to sit in a triangle on the bottom of your frame, that's fine, you can stop. Brick stitch is awesome because unlike peyote stitch where you have to have an even number or if you do odd, it's super confusing. Um, if you have herringbone, you need to have groups of two. If you have right angle weave, many of you are newer. I'm not even gonna explain that. That's a whole nother ball game. <laughs> do it with two needles first. It makes way more sense. That's a video that needs to be watched and watched and watched and watched. Correct. Yeah, I went back over <laughs> it again um, a lot on the Wimbledon bracelet. So yeah. if you really want to master it, you've got three rows of right angle weave to do if you do that bracelet. Yeah, it's great. So. Thanks. All right. So does everybody have at least five beads on? And if you don't, no problem. We'll just hang out a couple more minutes. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Okay. I only have three and I'm having trouble with this third one. Okay. No, so I guess I have four. If you've done two beads once, then you're good. Sometimes the hardest part about it, I'm going to go over to the side a little bit. Those of you that are at the end or are close to the end, if you are completely at the end, just hold up and wait. Um, when you have, I'm going to go over to the side of the project just a couple seconds. When you have that second bead on, so there's my first two beads kind of mimicking that. When I get my third bead on, the easiest thing to think about is that it's looping back on the frame itself. So you're looping under the frame after you put the bead on, and then the thread's gonna come right over top of the frame. When it comes right over top of the frame, then I'm gonna take my thread and needle and go back towards that previous bead. If there's a little bit of a gap like that, no problem. I can correct that gap when I come back over here and have that loop and it looks huge. And maybe your beads kind of wanting to go to the interior of the frame. That's where you, if you use your finger, it kind of pushes the beads towards the top. 
And then when I pull that bead, I can get it to sit closer by just kind of jiggling my thread and pulling it even closer along the design. So that can make that bead sit a little bit nicer. And then also just as a refresher too, you will get this class via um, a uh, link. And the easiest way we're doing it is through YouTube, but it'll be a private link and you can re-watch and re -gather. A lot of people too, when it comes to brick stitch, you'll get it easier and easier as you go in now to row number two. So I'm gonna kind of talk about row number two a little bit. We're good time wise. So row number two of my brick stitch here when I'm looking at it, we're gonna start just like we did row number one. However, I'm gonna get my artistic skills a chance now again. When we're doing that row number one, we added our beads and we have that one that's kind of sitting off to the side here. And then we have bead number two, three, four, five right here. We have that thread coming again down. This one's kind of sitting on the side. We go through the bead, back through it, add the next bead underneath the thread, over the form, back through the bead. And what we're doing as we do this here is we're creating what I said, these are the bridge threads. The bridge thread is going to take the place of our form. So this time when we attach our next row of beads, we're gonna be sewing onto and underneath that thread that connects your beads. So it's tight, it's in there, but you'll be able to see it. And what's gonna happen then is the next bead that sits on top, it'll start looking like a brick wall. So it'll sit here between the two beads from the first row. And we're gonna end up sewing up through, catching onto that bridge thread and going back through the bead. Adding the next bead, catching on to the bridge thread, back through the bead. So that's how we're gonna uh, go on to row number two. Row number two also, just like row number one, we're gonna start off with two beads again. So I'm gonna switch to my reddish color bead to make it easier for me to distinguish what row number one is and what row number two is. This is a lateral stripe design in the brick stitch. You can also do horizontal designs and that's just every other bead that we would have picked up along the side, that would have been different colors. So we would have picked up green, red to start, then red, then green, then red, then green. That's how you get that diagonal. So two beads are going on. And now I was sewing away from that starter thread or that's kind of knotted on piece of thread. I'm sewing toward it now. So I was sewing away, now I'm gonna sew toward that. However, I like to flip it in my hand. So that way the knot is now at the top because I feel the most comfortable always sewing in the same direction. So my knot at my end bead here is up at the top now. So I'm working again towards that knot. I have two beads on my thread to start off row two. And even if you have five beads on, no problem. You're gonna add four beads this time. Naturally, the brick stitch is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's the natural way brick stitches. Because we started out with eight beads, but we only have seven bridge threads. The next time we're gonna put on seven beads, we're only gonna have six bridge threads. You are going to use the bridge threads now to attach two. So here's bridge thread number one. I'm not going to sew through bridge thread number one. I'm going to sew through bridge thread number two. The reason that is, is because I have two beads on to start. So I'm skipping over my first bridge thread and I'm sewing underneath thread number two. If you're using like a Nymo thread, a sewing thread, um, one of the non-thermally bonded threads, try to sew underneath that thread so you're not going to sew through it. So I'm gonna sew underneath that thread and pull my thread and my beads. And when I do that, they kind of sit almost, if you know herringbone stitch, they kind of sit almost like herringbone stitch. Same deal though, I'm gonna take my thread and needle now and sew back through bead number two toward bead number one. And what I do then, you can see that bridge thread right there is connecting underneath the thread there and get my two pieces through, give a tight pull. Bead number two will sit nice. Bead number two, one will sit a little bit on an angle. Just like I did with this, bead number three goes on. 
I go right away to the next bridge thread. I sew underneath the next bridge thread, bring my thread and needle out. The bead kind of already wants to sit there. I'm gonna sew back through that bead toward the previous bead and out. Connecting onto that bridge thread as well as making another new bridge thread for what's gonna be row six. Oh. Putting a bead on, sewing underneath that bridge thread. And once you're underneath that bridge thread, you sew back through the bead you just added toward the previous one. Now, if your bead pops off, happens to the best of us, every time I brick stitch, I have a couple that pop off. Because I think, and it looks like from afar, from 24 inches, it looks like I sewed underneath that bridge thread, but I didn't. And then I add a bead on and then my bead pops off because I realized, oh yeah, I never caught on to that bridge thread when I'm working on it. So if you happen to have a bead pop off, that's what's happening. I'm gonna again, sew my next bead on. I know I'm, I'm doing this quicker. I don't expect you guys to already have five beads on. You may already have five beads on. And if you're getting the hang of it, you're more than welcome to move on to row number three if you're not already there and switch a different color. Now I'm doing this quickly while you guys work so that way I can talk to you about making bead number one in each row sit correctly. So I have my six beads on on my second row already. That bead number one from row number one, bead number one from row number two, it just kind of hangs off all the side and it's kind of awkward and it doesn't line up nicely. When you put on a bead below it and go through the bridge thread between beads one and bead number two, it helps to force that first bead into place and to sit nicely. Cause you're yanking basically on that bridge thread connecting bead number one and bead number two and it's gonna make that first bead want to behave and want to sit up straight. So I'm gonna put that back through here and show you then when I pull this one, right like that, it tightens up that bead number one and makes that first bead pretty much sit in its correct form. So you can see bead number one looks a lot better than it did prior to having the next row on. So naturally that bead will start to cooperate. People that do really long pieces of brick stitch, say it's 26 rows long. They want their bead number one to cooperate right away. You will see, where's my example here? You will see a little bit when you're done that it just, it still sits nice, but it just doesn't sit quite perfectly. And some people are really anal retentive about that and want their bead to sit correctly. When we get back to the end of row three, I'll show you how to, actually I'll show you how to uh, do that right now, but I don't expect you guys to do this. It's good to know at the very end, I'll reintroduce this. Is everybody pretty good with a bridge thread and catching another, catching the beads onto that bridge thread, comprehending kind of row number two? Anybody have any questions? Yep, go ahead, Stephanie. No, I'm, get, I'm getting it, I'm getting Perfect. it. Perfect, <laughs> good, good. Good. So as you put on two beads, you guys can keep your heads down because you'll be able to go in and watch this after this. Um, but if you want to go in and see this a little bit more, what you can do is you can go into, let's see here, you can go into, the start of each row and make bead number one cooperate right away. I'm going to show you that now, but I'm gonna have you guys do that down when we get to only two beads. So I'm gonna skip over my bridge thread. I'm back to my green beads. I'm skipping over bridge thread number one and I'm going underneath there, bridge thread number two. And once I sew underneath bridge thread number two, then I'm sewing back through bead number two toward bead number one. Now that's right away going to put that bead number one kind of on an angle. To correct that, I'm going to sew through bead number two one more full time again. 
I'm going back to bead number one. So I'm going back from bead number two, back over to bead number one. I'm gonna go underneath bridge thread number one, kind of hidden and tucked underneath there. Then I'm gonna sew back up through bead number one now. And when I pull that, it sits nice and exactly where it should be. Now to get to bead number three, I have to repeat bead number two. So I gotta go back through bead number two now. And I've gotta go underneath bridge thread number two that I already did once. And I have to go back up through bead number two. Very, very serious bead people will do that every single row. To me, it is a lot of extra work for one little tiny bead to sit slightly more at a perfect 90 degree angle. I usually do not do that, but that is the correct way to do it. So I'm gonna continue on with row number three here and continue downgrading. And I'm gonna complete my row quickly for number three. I'm gonna speed bead here, adding a bead, sewing underneath the bridge thread, going back up through the bead. And this you will get faster and faster with. And also the rows start getting shorter and shorter. So you get from one row to row. Row number two or row number uh, six happens in no time because it's like three beads. So my beads go on. I sew underneath the next bridge thread. I go back through a bead. Bead goes on. And here again, I'm back at the start between beads one and two of row number two, that row of red beads. By the time I add my next bead and my last bead on, which for this one would be six beads. And so back up through that six bead there. When I go in and hold tight next to the bead there and pull that nice and tight, I'm also gonna kind of push that one in from the previous row and that cooperates and sits right in line. So that's down there to six beads. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna power through really quickly till I get to five beads actually. And then I'll do the same thing at five. So that way I can show if you guys are continuing on, just that reminder that when you start each row, you're starting with two beads. If you start with one bead, you will see thread on the end and then it will drive you crazy. You'll think, why am I seeing thread? Oh yeah, every time brick stitch, you need to start with two bricks. You can't start a brick wall with one brick. You have to start with two. It's not considered a brick wall until you have two bricks in place. So two that, beads go on. Yeah. <laughs> is that every row we start with two? Every single row, Debbie, you're starting with two. Okay. Yep. Until we get to one bead and then you only have one bead to go on. But okay. yes, every single row will be two. So I've got two beads on, so I'm skipping that first bridge thread and I'm going on to the second. However, if I need my brick stitch to be one more bead wide, say I'm doing a pattern that calls for six and then the next row back to seven, you can go through the first bridge thread. So if you happen to see that you have a little extra bead off to the side before it, that's because you went through that first bridge thread and didn't skip over right away to your second. So I'm gonna skip over to my second. So underneath that bridge thread there and then back up through that bead. Now I'm gonna flip it again. So I'm sewing away from me. In my hand, I just flip the whole form and then on to my next row. Pull that tight. And this row here, I'm going to naturally, because I only have five bridge threads, have five beads on. So I'm gonna power through this because I'm gonna show you guys basically ladder stitch now. You guys are going to continue on. If you already know brick stitch and you want this just as a little um, reminder, you can do this little step with me but then you're probably gonna burn it off with your thread burner after the fact because it's gonna look like a drunken elf is what I said. This one kind of looked like, like his hat fell off to the side. So it's gonna look a little funky, but you'll learn a thing or two. All right, so I have my five beads on now. So I'm on my fourth row. Row number four had five beads on it. But what happens if I wanna do a, a figurine 
um, a, I usually use a flamingo as it because flamingos have one long leg, kind of their long <laughs> leg sticking down. And it's like, okay, well, how do I get, if this is the flamingo body or this is the fish's body, how am I getting his fins or his um, tail on there? If you have a pattern that again says, okay, you're going from row number with six, then you're going down to five, and then you need to go back to seven beads on your row. You're gonna ladder stitch on beads as you go. This is also how you will actually start when you're not on a form. So if I have my bead here, I'm gonna add a new bead, let that fall down next to my last bead. And then I'm not going through a bridge thread at all. I'm going back through the previous bead. So the thread's coming out the top of my last bead from that row. I add another bead onto my thread and needle, and then I sew back through the bead from the form toward my next row. That's gonna lay that bead right along the previous bead. Then I'm gonna sew back through the new bead that I just added. Adding a bead. My thread's now coming out of the bottom of that bead. I add a bead, I'm sewing into the top of that bead. That new bead that I added will sit right next to the last one. Go up through your new bead that you added and you're creating, as you're doing this, bridge threads. So you're creating a bridge thread when you do ladder stitch. So if you wanna do something that's completely off the form, not on a triangle, you're going to do this ladder stitch as your starter. So you're going in here, I'm adding a bead, coming out the top of the thread here. I'm gonna go into the bottom of the bead. That new bead lays right next to the old one and then I sew through the new bead. So that's how I'm gonna get it longer if I need to. If you wanna get your brick stitch shorter, you just stop. So if I was three beads into this row and it, that's all it called for on that row, then I would just stop, come back out that bead number three and start my next row. So I would just completely stop wherever I need to and stop with that bead and then start building my brick stitch on top of that. I'm gonna add one more bead so my thread's coming out the top. Everybody's still doing okay, any questions? Good, everybody's good so far, cool. All right, so you guys may be to further rows than me, you may still be kind of getting that first to second row and learning how to get that kind of brick stitch going. I'm going to lay this row that I just did of five right over top of my previous row and basically forget that it was there. You guys will get this video and you'll be able to watch and see exactly what it was that I did to add that ladder stitch. I'm just gonna come back out through the speed here and tuck that to the back just so I'm with you guys. So now I'm gonna speed bead a little bit. I have my two beads on. I'm going over bridge thread number one and I'm going to bridge thread number two sewing on and then I'm sewing. I'm gonna flip it in my hand because that's easier for me to work on. I sew back up through bead number two toward bead number one. That thread catches there and in it goes. And I'm at the point now where I'm going to have a total of four beads on my thread. And when I told you guys to stop on that first row if you only had five beads, no problem. You may actually be to the point where you have only two beads on. When you are at the point that you are at a row with only two beads on, go ahead and kind of stop and hang out. So here I am getting down and putting two beads on for my row where I have three left. Skipping over my first bridge thread, going through my second as I add a new row. And going back up through bead number two. One more bead goes on. I'm going to get that first bead of that row to cooperate going underneath that bridge thread. 
back up through bead number three here toward bead number two and I stop. Now I'm at the point where I have only two beads left to go. Now, no matter what you guys have left to go, just kind of stop. We're gonna go just to that section where we're adding two beads. I want you to learn this part and then you can take your thread and needle off, your needle off your thread and you can pull those beads off after the part, after the point here. But what I want you to realize is when you're coming back here and you're to your section of two beads, you will notice if you don't sew that second bead kind of in line, you sometimes will notice that it sits off to the side. So back when I said, I don't usually tuck in bead number one and go back through bead number one, when I get down to two beads and I'm doing a triangle form like this, I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm at my row here where I have just two beads. I'm gonna skip over bridge thread number one and I sew in to bridge thread number two, just like normal. When I come out there, I'm gonna go back through bead number two toward bead number one, just like normal. Now I'm at the point where I only have one bead to add. Because I only have one bead to add, it's going to sit a little bit different. I never have an opportunity to make that first bead kind of cooperate and sit correctly. So remember how I said I never go in and redo bead number one and then go back and redo bead number two. When you get down here to two beads, it really is not that much work because I never need to go back to that second bead. I'll show you why. So I'm gonna go and make this first bead cooperate. I'm going down through bead number one, catching on to that bridge thread that sits right underneath it. And sometimes you can hold it up and just kind of poke between those two beads if you need to. Then I'm gonna go back through bead number one toward bead number two and pull and get that to sit really nicely. Now I don't need to go back to bead number two and do it because I only have two beads left. I only have one more bead to add. So I don't have anywhere else that I have to progress to so I can stay right here. Did that little step make sense to everybody, especially if you already know brick stitch? If you don't, you don't have to do that, but it'll sit nicer if you do know brick stitch to go back and redo bead number one. Anybody good on that? Anybody have any questions? Good. All right, bead, when you get down to the end and you only have one bead to go, my, so here's where, if you do one bead, I'm gonna do it with the green so you can see the awkwardness of the red thread. Usually what I do is I take my bead and I'm coming out of bead number one right here. I just sew through bead number two. What that's going to do is put that finale bead so it's facing the opposite direction. So for all the beads on the brick stitch, they're facing that the holes are horizontal. That last one, I just put on that it faces lateral. Because if I want it to sit horizontal as well, I'm gonna add my last bead here, I'm down to one. I add my bead on, I sew under my bridge thread right there. And I go back through that bead Guess what? You're gonna see thread on the side of your bead. You see that red thread. Now, if that doesn't kill you, that's why you can't just do one bead because you're always gonna see thread on the edge. That's why every row has to start off with two beads. Now, it might not kill you to have that thread on there. More power to you, go for it, do that one bead. I think it's the easiest. I'm gonna take this off. So kind of ignore what I'm doing for a second. I'm taking that bead off to just face the bead the opposite direction. So I usually just take with my final bead here. I put my final bead on, I'm coming out through one of the two beads there on my last brick stitch and I go back into bead number one. And then that last bead just kind of caps it off sitting in the opposite direction. That's kind of the easiest, the easiest method definitely to do that. But honestly, most of the time when I get to the bottom of the brick stitch, I wanna have some fun. So you guys have bicones, you have a cool crystal, you have another frame that you could even attach to the bottom. 
So if you could say, oh yeah, I want to do this. This will look really cool as two in a drop. You could actually attach your other frame to the bottom here and have them cascading down. What I usually recommend is let me get my bi cones out. I've used a ton of my bi cones. If you can't tell in the examples um, earlier when I was shown, so let's see if I even have any bi cones left. If not, I might have to grab. They only give me so many, they only allow me to have so many packets. Sometimes I will hoard kits. Let me grab a crystal bead out here. You guys got two. Okay. Doesn't really matter. You guys have three millimeter bicones. Let's see if I have a three millimeter bicone here. I've got lots of twos. Two. I'll show a two for this, but I'll get a three before we do the next project. All right. So what you can do with your bicones? Now mine's a little bit tinier because I've used up all my other bicones. You can put a bead on. You can put two beads on. You can put three beads on. You can add three bicones if you want to the design. And what this is going to do is just kind of decorate your bottom with a tiny little bit of a drop. So you can see here in the one class we did just one crystal and then we did three beads for what's called a Pico trim. This one, same thing here. We did just that one bead with three little beads at the bottom. We'll do two. So I have on one of my 11 Odelicas. I have two of my bicones, and then I'm going to pick up three of my Delica beads. The reason I'm doing these three Delica beads is so that I don't see thread. If you want to just have one Delica bead underneath, you can do that, but you'll see a little bit of thread. A Pico trim refers to that grouping of three, and I'm going to sew back up through my two bicones, my one Delica bead. And when I pull that thread through there, I just kind of use my fingernails usually to make those beads sit in that little triangle shape. If you have a 15 OC bead, that's actually my preferred method at home, but I didn't want to intimidate anyone with the kits and give you guys more than one style of bead, especially if you were new. And then all I'll do here is go back up through bead number two. So it's the exact same thing. You're just adding some little dangle to the bottom. And now I have my triangle, but it has a little bit of dangle on the bottom. It's kind of an extra little thing. To get rid of your thread, what you can do if you want to is just sew on an angle through your brick stitch. So I'm going up to the top of the brick stitch here. And I recommend don't, you can go along the outer edge if you want to, but sometimes that pulls the beads a little bit. So you can sew right through the upper edge. That's super easy. Make sure you're sewing towards that stop bead and you can go right along the edge. I usually like to go a little bit towards the interior of the design and I'm just sewing on an angle because I'm usually already kind of in the interior. You can see I do about two beads at a time, back up towards there. Tuck those threads in, you won't see any thread then. And I'm gonna do two more beads then on that angle. Now I'm using a size 10 needle, so here's where it does get a little, does get a little tight, I had to wiggle there. And then pull that knot towards the back, knot those two thread ends together. And that's now the back of your earring because you'll see just the tiniest little bit of thread. I'll knot that down. And then after two knots, I'll take my thread burner or my threads out and I burn down my thread, making sure that I'm not burning any of the thread in my project which is usually a lot easier to do with like a herringbone stitch than it is with a brick stitch. But as you burn down, make sure you're not burning down on the thread that is on your form. And then when I sit this out front right there, you, can, you don't see that knot at all. And then also on mine, you can see with that little ladder stitch there, it's almost like I had an extra little design on the top. So you can add on to and embellish the brick stitch when you're working on it. Any questions? Questions, good. All right, I'm gonna jump right into one of my square forms. So if you have that earring done or if you're getting towards the bottom, go ahead and just stick it right over so that way we can go into the square form. We did some beading on the, uh, 
We did the beading on the triangle towards the exterior of the form. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bead towards the interior of the form. I'm gonna show you guys brick stitch and then we're gonna do kind of these little corners here. So my first example, if you do wanna do another color of beads, this one here is the gold bead and just the silver and then your bicones. So if you wanna grab those little bicones. And then to show you in here, this little teardrop, we just thought was really pretty. We already kind of had them in groups of two. And I said, I'll oh, throw them in there too, because they can get creative with those if they want to. This little teardrop fits really well inside of that triangle form. So if you want to, you could add that crystal right to the triangle form. And just think about anything that you're adding is pretty much like sewing on a button. So you're just going through the holes and attaching and looping now onto the form if you do want to add anything in there. And that's what we're going to do on this one too. So go ahead and grab out your form. And I think I'm going to need to burn this guy off my form here. All this hard work. You can see all I'm doing right now, if you get through and you're like, okay, I need to start over. If you have a thread burner, this is metal and it's a good metal, it's a Zamic metal and the gold ones are brass. So the, the heat of the thread burner isn't really gonna bother it much. And that's an easy solution to taking all of your beads off right away. Rather than having to like get in there with a threads, uh, a seam ripper or anything. Right. And I'm gonna continue on with my red and green beads just because they're easier to see. But if you wanna go for your gold beads, go for it. You should have enough thread left over in that thread that you can either continue with your form that you have on, or I had you keep that one, I had you thread another one so that way you could keep that needle on your first project if you're still working on it. And I'm gonna quick grab my three millimeter bi because I need them. And I think I have some more. This is a little sneak peek. This is what my bead mat actually looks like. So here's a sneak peek of my bead mat. So this is what I'm designing right now is a Christmas ornament cover that's gonna go around a Christmas ball. And my bicones are, I thought I saw some in my corner. So I just need one and we might use the red ones. I'm gonna use red ones. I've used up my allotted amount in my three previous classes. They didn't give me more, but I want a three millimeter bicone. Put that bead not down. All right, so I have my three millimeter bicones here. And I'm gonna be doing three sets of brick stitch on this form here. So you can see those three threads there. You've got three threads here, three threads here, three here, three here. We're gonna be doing brick stitch on the interior of the form. Now that's not the nicest thing, it's kind of annoying. So the first one we're just gonna to do to the outside and then we'll flip it to the inside because it's a little bit easier to do on the exterior of the frame. So I moved my red needle, we'll go with white. Okay, so I have my white thread here because my red thread disappeared with my other beading, my bead board. I'm gonna tie this on to my form, just like we did previously. Now this is the point, who, who can tell me how many beads we're gonna start out with on our brick stitch? Two. Everybody can stay together. Two. 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 Yeah. So we're gonna start out with our two beads again, just like we've been doing. And all we're doing is one row of our brick stitch, that's it. So we did, uh, what did you end up with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows of brick stitch on the triangle. We're doing one row of brick stitch. That's it. Also, while you're getting ready and you're tying your knot on, just to show you, this kind of looks like a mess because it is, but on your little pictures here, you have examples of the one that we did together. Then you have this one here, the square that we'll be working on, but it's just showing two beads stacked on top. This is also just one row of brick stitch, but see, instead of adding one bead, I added two. So my first row of my, my brick stitch, I'm actually adding four beads because they're gonna stack one on top of the other and then just continued on. That's a nice way to get a filler a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger. And when it comes to the corners here, I just decorated with three beads. You can also see the one we're working on is in that little corner. 
And then this one here, same deal, I go from one bead, I add another bead on just to kind of sit off to the side to two beads. Then I increase my brick stitch to three beads, do another three or four beads, five beads, six beads, seven beads. So I just kept going more and more. All right, so on to our square here. I'm going to add two beads. So I have my two green beads on. I'm gonna lay this again towards the exterior of the frame, just because it's a little bit easier to hold at first. We're gonna sew through our frame from the back toward the front. And then just like we've been doing, that thread's gonna sit right over top of the frame. And I'm gonna sew back through my second bead toward my first bead there. Now again, see how big my thread is and it's kind of not wanting to cooperate. Pull your thread and not your needle and kind of tuck on that there. I'm going to then do one more bead on my thread and needle. I'm gonna go through my frame. So my thread's gonna lay over top of the frame this way and then go through my third bead and pull nice and tight. So now I have three beads on my frame. I'm gonna start my next side. Don't worry if your side's not completed, you've got four sides to do. So those of you that are through it, I'm gonna put on one of my bicones. And at the same time, I'm gonna put on one more of my beads, which is gonna be on the next corner or the next side. Here's where I'm gonna take my fingers and flip those three beads towards the center of the frame. So they were on the outside, I'm just flipping them right to the center. After I put my bead on there, I'm gonna go over top, my thread's gonna appear over top of the frame. I'm tucking just like we've been doing underneath the frame. And then I'm going through the bead toward the bicone. What you wanna make sure when you're doing this towards the interior of a frame is just that you're not going over and kind of knotting your thread into the design. Most likely what's gonna happen is there's a huge gap there. To solve that huge gap, again, just go in and pull the thread tight. My bicone is gonna sit in the middle of each of my corners. So it looks like I've started kind of a new row of brick stitch, but I'm just circling around the frame. So I'm circling around the interior of the frame. If I wanted to, I could have actually had this on the exterior of the frame doing the same exact thing. I'm gonna add my next bead here, let that drop down towards the other one, take my thread and needle, go over the frame, tuck underneath and bring the needle through just like I've been doing. So with my hand, I'm just kind of pushing that bead so it doesn't fall, over, fall outward. And I'm gonna sew back up through that bead. Again, it's gonna to wanna to go over to the next side, just kind of push it over and then pull it up. And that gets your second bead in there. When you do your third bead then, and some of you might be to your first corner, that's totally cool. I'm gonna go over my frame, tucking around and then back up through that bead. So what I like to do when I'm on the interior of the frame is as I'm sewing through the frame, I also like to sew through the bead. So you can see the needles coming through the back there and I'm also throwing, sewing through the bead at the same time. That way I don't have as much chance of knotting my thread. Once you have those three beads on, you're grabbing your next three millimeter bicone. I'm gonna let that bead lay right there. And I'm also grabbing my next Delica bead. Letting my next Delica bead lay right next to the bicone. I'm gonna lay this thread over top of the frame, go through the frame. And at the same time, I'm gonna sew back through my Delica toward my three millimeter bicone. Push that down if you need to. So it's kind of right there in that corner. Again, then I'm gonna grab my next bead. Let that lay down next to the last one. 
take my thread and needle over my frame. So underneath my frame and through my frame, but at the same time, it makes it easy if I can just grab and sew back up through my bead. And there goes bead number two. Back to bead number three and we're good time-wise. We still have about 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna go back up through the bead and through the back of the frame. So you'll start to learn it. It'll start to become a lot easier to hold it once you practice and do this more. It's very unlikely that I get my thread tangled up where you might think, man, I'm getting my thread in my loop or my beads getting in my loop. It gets easier when you realize kind of how to hold it. I'm gonna do my next three millimeter bicone and then my next bead. Anybody need any help on this right away? Good, okay. So this one's a little bit more challenging because that needle is going kind of towards the interior of the frame. So I have my bicone on there. I put on my Delica bead over top of the frame. And then when I sew through the frame, I also sew right through the Delica and out. And then you get to see that big loop against the frame. Let me pull it nice and tight. I'm gonna do two more beads. One at a time. And I try to also my stop bead, I usually try to kind of push it to the back and just pinch that down with my fingers because every project you do, you're gonna get your stop thread there, your the other end of your thread or your stop bead twisted in. It's just inevitable. My number one tool, which is on my other board, which is now on the ground that I love. This is a reamer, it's a bead reamer. So it is, or an all beading, all beading reamer, beading tool. It doesn't have the, this is the Tulip brand one. I get pretty much every knot out with this and every clogged hole out with this. It's always nice to kind of just have it handy. But if I happen to get my thread twisted and this thread comes into one of these, I can usually get it out pretty easily with that. So even if you have a little, tiny one for manicure set that you do the knots on, sometimes those work. When you get to corner number four, you're gonna add basically the first side of brick stitch to the last side of brick stitch. So I have my bicone on here. So if you're still, if you're not to corner number four, no big deal. Everybody good? Let me take a sip of my tea. Everybody's beating away. All right, wherever you are for a second, just kind of eyes up so that way you can see how you're going to, and if you've already got this, go for it, keep going. Your fourth corner, you need to add your fourth side of your beads to your first side. This bicone is gonna help you do that. You get an opportunity to straighten out that first bead because you're coming out of your last bead, you add your bicone on, and then you're gonna sew down through bead number one. When you sew down through bead number one, you're gonna go around the form, just like we've been doing, back up through the form, and again, if I can, I'm sewing right back through bead number one. So I went around the form, down bead number one, around the form, and then back up through bead number one. So you'll end up seeing two bridge or two pieces of thread right there on that exterior underneath bead number one. You can stop there if you want to, and you just kind of tie a knot that you can hide, pulling your thread up. Or what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do basically a little peyote stitch. We're gonna sew through our bicones. And when we sew through our bicones then, I'm gonna add two delicas between. Sew through the next bicone, two delicas. Sew through the next bicone, two delicas. So it's pretty simple, this next row, 
but it'll space it out really, really nicely and they fit perfectly inside this 15 millimeter frame. So when you're coming out V number one, you're actually gonna go back toward, throw my project. You're actually gonna go back toward bead number, see I can do this now, 12, bead number 12. So I'm gonna sew back through the bicone that I just kind of was coming out of, not through the brick stitch at all, just pick up two beads, two delicas, and then sew through your next corner bead, which is gonna be your next bicone. Two delicas through your next corner. And this also makes it kind of really squared. Two beads go on, back through your next bicone. And then two more. One and two, and three your next bicone. Super simple then. And you can, so you guys get a, a little sneak peek too. Um, let me grab it off, no, do I still have it on my map? Maybe not, I think Amber has it in the photography studio. Uh, we're gonna be doing another kind of version of this that I have a video coming out that's a wreath. So I'm using a square form, it's slightly bigger, but I show this one here, using your green beads as your whole area. I suggested using green thread, so that way you see the little bit of green. I used red beads as my berries instead of the bronze. And then I did a little bit more beads towards the interior. So that's coming as a video, which you'll easily be able to modify with the beads that you have. So that's coming out as a YouTube video. What you need to figure out then is how you're gonna attach your, your wire to something like this. So in your kit, not only did you get your frames and ear wires, but you also got wire guards. If you're unfamiliar with wire guards, they are perfect little tools basically is what they are to work and to use as like the top of the design. They sit really, really nicely on ear wires, on um, clasps, if you're using like any clasp guarding clasps or push clasps or even toggle clasps. They just have a really nice polished look to the end of them. And they also prevent your thread from fraying because it's going through and you have wire or metal on metal rather than metal on thread. The wire guards, when you look at them, they have two little tubes on each side. Those little tubes, something to keep in mind is they're not soldered. So basically they can open up just like the horseshoe shape where you have the thread that's gonna run in the interior of that horseshoe shape, the sides are not soldered shut. So one thing that you wanna keep in mind is you wanna to try to limit your time through them to about three times with your needle. So only about three threads going along the top of your wire guard. So there are different sizes of wire guards. There's one that says it's for 0.018 and one that says it's for 0.015 or sometimes it'll say point O two O. We just have the one size, which is going to be your smaller size. The bigger ones get really, really big. And honestly, if you're using them with a stainless steel cable that big, you don't need them. Um, that's usually where you would use them. I have a video, a better beater on uh, professionally finishing your jewelry, just with beading wire, or beading cable, showing how to use them as well. But I use them hardly ever with beading wire. I just connect right to the wire. It's built for that. But I love to use them with thread. And here at the top, I'm gonna to show you guys, and I brought this one out just to show that if we would have kept going with our brick stitch, this one kind of looks a little bit like a tree. And the idea, we put them in non-obnoxious Christmas colors. So you can hopefully make yourself a pair, make a pair for a friend, challenge yourself to do that uh, start with just the brick stitch, like I did here, where you just start with that brick stitch and create your own form you have tons of delicas to be able to do more than just the forms. Just like we did on the exterior here, and we're gonna do just a tiny little bit more on the top. And that tiny little bit more on the top, I'm gonna to have you add two beads, and then we're gonna add our wire guard, two more beads and down. This example here shows you that you can kind of do garland back and forth if you want to. So I just did brick stitch up, 
And you can tell exactly what I did here. I did one bead and then I added my bicone, used my bicone as my brick stitch, went through my form back up through my bicone. So my bicone is brick stitched on, added my wire guard, went back through my bicone one more time. So I have two times that I did that brick stitch formation and then down to the other side and continued with my brick stitch. Once I was done with my brick stitch, it came towards the interior, added five beads, just like brick stitch. I went through the form, then back through my beads around to the back of the frame. And then I added my next little line of my little tinsel or whatever it is there. Again, the other side of the frame looped around the form to kind of anchor it in and then back along the frame through it. And again, back and forth. So there's lots of possibilities and you have a bunch of these. I, I forgot last class, I'll post a picture of these two in the Facebook group for beading and jewelry making and try to remember to post it there also. So that way you guys have a reference for this one, but it'll also be in this video that you can look. So there's tons of options. When you're done with your square, you're gonna be coming out of one of your bicones because that's what you started with. And so you added your two beads, went through a bicone, two beads, bicone, two beads, bicone, and so forth. You're coming out of bicone at bead number 12. You're gonna sew down bead number 12 towards the exterior of the frame. We're gonna start brick stitch again. So once again, two beads. Yay, two beads go on. And now I'm gonna switch from the interior to the exterior of the frame. I'm gonna go through the frame, back up through bead number one. I'm not worrying about making bead number two sit and cooperate yet, because I'm gonna come back down that side. I'm gonna go into my wire guard or my wire protector. So up through that one side, down through the other side. That thread's gonna go right into that loop there. So you're just kind of adding another little bead in between. So just like we did with the bicones where we added here, we're doing the same thing, but just with a wire guard. And that's gonna to be towards the top. Going over now to the next corner, add another Delica. Just kind of ignore the fact that you're on a corner and you're going to the next side of your square. Tuck from the bottom of that square toward the top of the square. And then back through that bead toward the wire guard. And pull. That bead's just gonna kind of sit right there along the side and your wire guard's gonna sit in the middle. I have one more bead to go on. And you can do three if you want it to sit a little bit fuller at the top. We could do a, a bicone just like I did here. You wanna add a bicone. Again, I'm going adding my bead, going through my form from the back towards the front. I'm pretty consistent on that always. And then back up through bead number two. And there I have that. Now, if you don't wanna to have to come back through, and honestly, these forms are pretty light, you can go down through bead number one and kind of tuck over to get to that stop bead. What I'm gonna do is reinforce. I'm going back through bead number three. So I'm coming out of bead number four, that's all I'm gonna do for the top. Going back down bead number three, through my form, back up through bead number three. And as I go bead number three, you can see it wants to turn a little bit to the side. When you put an ear wire, the weight is going to force that up. So don't worry too much about that. I'm gonna go back up through that bead there. And I'm gonna reinforce back through the wire guard. I'm gonna go through there. Make sure my thread stays in that little arch of the wire guard. Back down through the wire guard on the other side and back down through bead number two. Again, make sure that thread stays in there. Tuck underneath. Back up through bead number two. And now bead number one. And I'm gonna to go to the back there, underneath bead number one. And I'm going to sew then right below 
to Angelica. That sits kind of right below it. Through my bicone. And I know this is a lot of sewing, so you'll get this on the you'll get this on the video. And then right here is my knot. I'm gonna pick a side, whatever is gonna be the top or the bottom, not those two thread ends together. Burn down my thread. And when you burn down your thread too, it helps to fuse kind of that thread ends together and you burn down then the end of the thread. And then you'll just open up your earring, wherever that may be right here. And when you open up your earring, you slide it on. Wherever you have that thread burnt, I usually make that the back. You slide your earring on. And if you have trouble getting your wire guard in at all, hold right at the crease and just kind of bend your earring up a little bit. And that'll slip right in there. And then you have your earring completed. And that's the same with the nice thing with the triangle. You don't have to do anything. With your triangle, you just open up the ear wire a tiny little bit, stick that triangle right in there, and it'll hang naturally from that triangle phase. You can also do the same thing on the square, or if you're going the whole way around the square, you can go in and connect to the thread on the sides, or I could have added the wire guard here on the side. So this again is just two rows of my brick stitch. And then at the top, instead of adding the bicone, I added three C beads and then back down to those two and back up. So what we did to the interior, you can also do to the exterior of your form. And just ignore all these threads in the interior. That was me showing how to do that garland that you're going through. And then just like we did kind of tucking underneath a bridge thread, you're kind of tucking between the form and back and forth. So that's how you do that garland one if you want to. When it comes to fringe, I wanna to touch on this. I know we only have a couple more minutes. But when it comes to fringe and working with fringe, let me see if I have thread to show you. I have a bobbin. I thought I had a little bit of bobbin of thread. When it comes to fringe and working with the fringe, this is where I do recommend switching threads. So if you're normally working with wildfire, you're working with fireline, see how these don't wanna hang nicely and they don't wanna drape down. What you'll want is like a KO or a Mayuki thread. It's gonna be a lot more supple when you're working with it. And it's usually on smaller spools, but it's not the thermally bonded thread. It's going to be a nice, just kind of almost like a sewing thread. It's gonna feel a lot softer and a lot thinner. You can do your entire brick stitch in with the regular wildfire thread. And say you're doing your brick stitch like on the form here and you did this first row just as a ladder stitch and you wanna hang your fringe down this way, switch over threads to one of those more so uh, bead embroidery threads, it's just gonna make it hang down a lot nicer. So switch over to your KO thread, your Miyuki 1G thread, your Nymo thread, um, which one did I forget? Sono thread, uh, any of those are gonna just have a little bit of a nicer drapage and a hang. So that way you don't end up with little octopus tentacles that don't wanna hang down nicely. And at any point in the brick stitch too, you can stop and do your fringe. When you do the fringe, you're just gonna come out of your last bead, add whatever fringe you want to, and sew into the bead before it. Then go over to the next one, sew down that bead, add some fringe, sew back up into the one before it. Sew down the next one, back up into the one before it. That's the easiest way to do the fringe, is to basically just have the fringe almost seem like a brick stitch that it's laying in between every other bead. Because you're coming out of bead number one, add your fringe, so up bead number two, go around then bead number three and down, go back up into bead number four and out bead number five. So you're just going right between your beads as you're stitching the line. And then also just to touch on to 
You can also add beads along the top of your brick stitch. So when you're looking at the brick stitch, if you want to, and you don't want to see a lot of thread, because naturally you're going to see that bridge thread basically here. If you don't want to see that bridge thread along the top of the beads and you're going to make this go out and out and out and see that white thread, I don't want to see that white thread, just add a 15 OC bead on. So you add, say I'm starting my red beads there. I'm coming out the top of the red. I'm getting ready to add my two green beads. Add one 15 OC bead down through the two green beads, back up through them. Another 15 O down through the two green beads, back up through one 15 O. And that extra little bead on the edge will hide that thread that appears on the edge. So, any other questions? I'm going to be late, but it works. <laughs> She'll survive. I text her that I'm going to be a couple of minutes late. He's good. Any questions, guys? Oh, this is great. Thank you. You're welcome. I know it's a ton of information and that's why we're going to be sending you out the videos. If you signed up for a class that you didn't make, you may have already gotten a video as well. I tried to write down names and made sure that you were in the video, but you may have already gotten a video. I'm not sure if they, I, honestly, I have to check with Amber. It was kind of a crazy week. Um, check with Amber. They may have been waiting till today to send out the final videos to see who was on each person. Um, but if you were on two, if you didn't get it or you got kicked off on one, you will get both. So you'll get both the start because maybe it made a little bit more sense. We covered pretty much the exact same thing if in everything. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, need any help at all, feel free to reach out to me. I'll also put in the chat here. Um, this is my email address. If you uh, email info at Potomac Beads, that also comes to me anyway. It comes to myself or Melissa. If you're ever on our website and it pops up, uh, chat with us. We're online. You get myself or Melissa, and she'll be able to put you in contact too with me. So my mine is just Ali at Potomac Brands with an X. Um, it's basically our corporate thing. Our, our headquarters and then Bead on the board is underneath that and Potomac Beads and then another little thing that we have. So I'm just Allie at Potomac with an X brands. Um, but if you go to info app, you 95% of the time get me because I shuffle I different people. So. Thank you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, we're probably gonna do another one of these. We might be doing it on uh, raw stitch because I know a lot of people struggle with raw stitch and we might actually be doing it on curl stitch. So doing prismatic right angle weave, I think is what we're going to do a little bit of a tutorial on. It'll be a little bit longer class, uh, but same deal that we'll have a packet and do that sometime in the new year. Probably do this a couple of times. We're looking at like four times a year, just having these series where we have two classes and then a makeup one. So thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful yes, night. Hopefully you learned something. Look forward to uh, getting that video too. Don't wait to do your matching pair. If you are right now in your mindset, you got the triangle and you didn't get the square, don't worry about it. Finish your triangle because then it's going to start making sense again for it. So. Well, thank, well, thank you so much. Bye. Awesome. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Too. Bye. Thanks.